Hello. As you see here, I'm going to talk about the cross section of the brain brainstem. So, uh, in my previous videos, I showed you the different structures of the brainstem. I showed you the ascending tracts, the descending tracts. I also demonstrated you all those nuclei related to the cranial nerves. I also showed you the cranial nerve. So, as you know, the brainstem is really, really small and but this small structure acts like a highway so lots of small structures packed together in this small area so this is the mid sagittal section you can see at the top here we have the brain and down here we have the cerebellum and you see here in this mid sagittal section here is the brain stem you can see how the brain stem is really really small and lots of structures packed in this small area so as you know we have three different parts midbrain this projection is called the pons and down here we have the medulla oblongata so today i'm going to take a cross section from bottom to the top and i'm going to show you different parts and different structures so if you want to know the details about the structures in this cross section you should first watch the previous videos to know the details about the ascending descending tract to know the details about the cranial nerves and nuclei as well so as you see in this image we have a coronal section of the brain so this is a coronal section you can see right and left hemisphere and you can also see two nuclei basal nuclei and up here and this is the thalamus and down here you can see the brain stem and this blue area is the cerebellum at the back of the brain stem we have cerebellum and finally here we have the spinal cord so today i'm going to focus on the medulla oblongata this is the midbrain this bulge area is the pons and down here we have medulla oblongata so as you know medulla oblongata is here this is the medulla oblongata so if you look at closely there is a line at the center it's called central canal it continues down as the central canal of the spinal cord so but it gets a little bit expand and it makes the fourth ventricle which is filled with csf so medulla oblongata has two parts down here it is called closed part up here it is called open part when i say open part it means that instead of central canal at the top we have fourth ventricle and when i say closed part i mean the caudal part which is which contains the central canal so when you are taking a cross section through the brain stem specifically through the medulla oblongata you should first know that if whether the cross section is at the level of the central canal which is known as the cross the closed part or is at the level of the uh, this part fourth ventricle so this is the central canal and this part is the fourth ventricle if you want to know the details you should first focus on the external features of the medulla oblongata then we can try to draw some images from external or from superficial to deep so i'm going to give you an overview about the external features that i showed you in my previous videos this is the anterior view of the brain stem this part is the anterior view of the um, medulla oblongata if you look at closely at the midline we have a sulcus it is called ventro median sulcus on either side of the ventro median sulcus we have two projections it's called pyramid which is carrying the cortico spinal tracts and at the top on either side of the pyramid we have two bulges they are called olive and if you look at 
the mezzala oblongata from posterior view, you can see again a line is called dorsal median fissure and on the lateral side you can see a bulge area it is called gracile tract at the top it makes a bulge it's called gracile tubercle which contains a gracile nucleus laterally we have cuneate tract at the top where we have cuneate tubercle if I take a cross section at the level of the distal or caudal part of the medulla oblongata, which contains a central canal, this is the anterior, and here is the posterior. So you are familiarized with this cross section of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord has a butterfly shaped structure. It is called gray matter at the center, and which is surrounded by the white matter. And gray matter has two ventral horn. It contains the cell body of the motor neurons and two dorsal horns. They are containing the uh, interneurons and the axons, sensory neurons. So you can also see the columns, dorsal column, lateral column, and ventral column. They are carrying the ascending and descending tracts. So, as you see this one, as I showed you, this is the spinal cord. You cannot find the regular structures like this in brain stem. Because in the brain stem, earthquake will happen. And you can find some nuclei instead of the gray matter. So, nuclei means the cell body, a group of cell body working together and have the same function. So, instead of the... Uh, ventral horns and dorsal horns, we have motor nuclei and sensory nuclei. And we also have ascending and descending tracts, the same as the spinal cord here. So I'm going to show you from the superficial anterior part to the deepest part. So anterior part, as I showed you anteriorly, we have two bulges here. They are called pyramid. So on the midline, in the midline, this area is called ventral median or anterior median sulcus. On either side, we have pyramids. So, right and left pyramid. What is the content of the pyramid? So, the content of the pyramid is corticospinal tract. So, Hopefully, you remember that the corticospinal tract is a descending tract. It's a motor tract. It contains upper and lower motor neurons. The cell body of the upper motor neurons is here, primary motor area of the brain cortex, and the axon coming together and passing through the, this area, internal capsule, and then crossing the midbrain, and then crossing the palms, and then getting into the medulla. When they are getting into the medulla, what will happen? Most of the fibers crossing the medulla. So, and then it goes down to get into the spinal cord. So at this level here, we have a, an important decussation or crossing. It's called motor decussation. So this cross section is at the level of the motor decussation because it, it happens at the level of the rostral part of the medulla oblongata. So corticospinal tract contains crossing each other and decussating like this, getting into the opposite side here and landing in the here they are landing the lateral column of the spinal cord. It goes down and lands here, the lateral column of the spinal cord. So this is the pyramid. In the spinal cord, what do we have here? Here is called dorsal column. It contains dorsal column tract. It is subdivided into gracile, 
fasciculus or gracile tract and cuneate fasciculus. Again, we have gracile here. Medially, we have gracile. Laterally, we have cuneate. On the other side, medial side, we have gracile. Laterally, we have cuneate. So they are carrying the conscious, proprioceptive, and tactile um, um, from the upper limb and lower limb to the thalamus. So as you see here, corticospinal tract anteriorly, they are motor, but gracile and cuneate at the posterior, they are sensory. So I showed you descending tracts like corticospinal tract and ascending tracts like gracile and cuneate tracts. What else? We have lots of descending tracts like spinal thalamic tract. Hopefully you remember that spinothalamic tract lands here in the spinal cord in the ventral lateral part of the white matter and then it goes up like this, it goes up. So you can find it here. This is the spinothalamic tract at the same area. And we also have spinocerebellar tract. Spinocerebellar tract would be here. Spinocerebellar. So you can find the spinocerebellar here. Spinocerebellar. So spinothalamic, carrying the sensory information like pain and temperature from the body, whole body except the head and neck to the thalamus. And spinocerebellar, carrying the uh, non-conscious or unconscious uh, proprioceptive from the joints and muscles to the cerebellum, spinal cerebellum. So I showed you most of the descending and ascending tracts in this cross section at the level of the motor decusation or at the level of the rostral part of the medulla oblongata. What about the nuclei? As I mentioned before, in the spinal cord, we have gray matter. Earthquake happened and separated them and made the nuclei. Which nuclei we have in the brain stem? So this is the brain stem. Down here we have the medulla oblongata. Cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, 12, four last cranial nerves are related to the medulla oblongata. On the lateral side, you can see cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, 10, vagus, 11, accessory and anteriorly between the olive and pyramid you can see the hypoglossal cranial nerve 12. So the nuclei related to these uh, cranial nerves are packed into the medulla oblongata. I'm going to show you on the posterior view these uh, nuclei related to the cranial nerves uh, 9 to 11, 9 to 12. So if you look at here closely we have just in the midline, we have hypoglossal nucleus, cranial nerve 12. A little bit lateral to this, we have DMX, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus. This chair-shaped nucleus is solitary nucleus, which is sensory. And you can also see in the anterolateral part, we have another nucleus. It is called nucleus ambiguous for 9, 10, 11. It is positioned the anterolaterally. Whereas the hypoglossal is a motor nucleus, it is positioned posterior medially. Nucleus ambiguous, hypoglossal, they are motor nuclei. One of them is posterior medial, the other one is anterolateral. In addition to these cranial nuclei, 9 to 12, we also have cranial nerve 5, sensory nucleus, which is really, really, really long. It, you can find this on the whole length of the uh, brain stem. You can see here this is the trigeminal nucleus, sensory nucleus of trigeminal. It's called spinal part, spinal, because it's coming from the rostral part of the spinal cord. Spinal trigeminal nucleus. So if you take a cross section through the caudal part, you should only see just the spinal trigeminal nucleus. So if you want to show on the image, you can find laterally here, 
trigeminal or spinal nucleus of trigeminal and also you can find the tract spinal trigeminal tract spinal trigeminal nucleus so it's carrying the sensory information like pain and temperature from the face and head whereas the spinal thalamic carrying the sensory information related to the pain and temperature from the rest of the body so as you know in some segments of the spinal cord like t1 to l2 we have an extra horn it is called lateral horn so lateral horn contains the cell body of the uh, autonomic uh, nervous system like sympathetic uh, neuron the cell body of the sympathetic neurons so we can have some nuclei here in the lateral side between the motor and dorsal is a sensory we have autonomic nuclei and fibers they are positions here it is called autonomic nuclei and fibers so if you want to take a cross section in a bottom line if you want to take a cross section through the brain stem in different levels you should first ask yourself uh, about the closed part or open part of the medulla oblongata if it is closed part we have central canal at the center if it is open part it expands as the lateral ventricle so this is the rostral part sorry the caudal part so we have central canal so first of all you should first ask yourself about the space if it is in the closed part or open part closed part we have central canal open part we have fourth ventricle so second question you should ask yourself about the ascending and third question descending tracts which tracts and where is the exact place of the tracts in this section and which tracts are decussating for example at this level these the motor decussation corticospinal tracts are decussating fourth question you should ask yourself about the nuclei which nuclei you can find it at this level that i showed you the spinal trigeminal nucleus at this level thank you so much